Hi dumplings, I'm outside on another gorgeous autumn day and I decided that it was probably appropriate to clear up a few things about shadow work that have been amalgamating in my mind lately that I think it's probably time to talk about and it's probably appropriate to talk about as we approach Samhain, you know, I just feel like it's time for shadow work stuff now and there's a few things that I've kind of picked up along the way as talking points that I think either need to be cleared up, uh, myths that need to be busted or things that I just need to get out of my system so I've got some nuts and some apple juice with no nasties apparently so let's get on with it yes let's get on with it if you like Monty Python then you know why I just did that if you don't then let's just carry on I seriously wish I bought my tripod because I'm actually sat down and it would be nice to not have to hold my arm up but I'm doing it for you because I love you very much and you're worth it I have explained shadow work to some people, not necessarily people that watch my channel, but people in my life over the last couple of years, because they've wanted to understand more about what I teach and what I'm interested in, what I have been doing with the Four Queens, and obviously part of that has been shadow work, and sometimes also shadow work has come up in conversations in which I've been counselling, guiding, helping, or otherwise supporting or encouraging somebody in my life. And one thing that I have noticed about the reactions that some people have given me in relation to this subject is that they seem to think that shadow work is just about um, being, is just basically about being able to keep hold of all of your flaws and all of your nasty characteristics and all of your um, malice or laziness or deceit or self-deceit or arrogance or violent tendencies or whatever the fuck, <laughs> uh, addictive tendencies, anything like that. Uh, people seem to, some people seem to think that shadow work is basically about being able to keep hold of these things and insist that everybody be okay with them or just exit stage left, leave your life. And that's interesting to me because it's a lot like when people go to a meditation class or a mindfulness class, and this can happen quite often as well, they go in there, they listen to the teacher, they do a bit of meditation or mindfulness, then they come out of the class and when they are asked to regurgitate what they learned and explain what meditation is about, some percentage of them will invariably say um, it's about the absence of thought, it's about stopping yourself from thinking, it's about rejecting thoughts completely. And that is interesting to meditation teachers because that is actually not what is being taught at all and that is not what any meditation teacher worth their salt would ask you to do because meditation isn't about the absence of thought. You know, it's about disciplining yourself to come back to the object of mindfulness from your thoughts, to accept your thoughts, but not be attached to your thoughts. So a lot of people get this very like mad idea about what meditation is and nobody explicitly tells them that that is what meditation is, but it is what they infer, it's what they decide that it is. And I think shadow work has this problem as well, where people start to decide what it is. They decide what I'm trying to infer, but I haven't actually explicitly said that. And I have not ever, nor would I ever say at any point, that shadow work is just about having your flaws accepted by people or telling those people to bye bye, leave my life. That's not what shadow work is. And actually, um, Charlie Says Go made a video where she talks about this particular shadow work related BS carousel and how important it is to get off of it. And I remember watching that video and thinking that it was really something, and I'll link it below, because she actually talks about how some people are convincing themselves that shadow work is just about having all of your stuff accepted unconditionally by people and feeling like you shouldn't need to change um, the way that you behave with people or the way that you respond to the world behaviorally or cognitively that basically you are who you are and fuck anyone who doesn't like it and actually that is really about using shadow work to prop up your hope and your expectation that you shouldn't have to do anything to make the world better or to make your relationships better or to otherwise have a more fulfilling and fulfilled life. Shadow work is about self-acceptance. So it is about saying, I accept that I'm not perfect. I accept that I'm human. I accept that I do these things. I accept that I have these behaviors. But shadow work is not about just stopping there and not putting that understanding into action. And shadow work is definitely not about expecting other people in your life to just accept you know, that you are never going to change, you're never going to make an effort to uphold your end of a bargain or to better a relationship that's, that's complex or difficult at the moment. That's not what it's about. And actually, I just feel like that is a resistance to the true work, if you will. 
Here's what I wrote in my handy little notebook, which I use for kind of recording what it is that I want to say in video, so I make sure that I don't completely miss the point. Um, here it is. It's about intention. Are you intending to create change through heightened awareness of self, or are you searching for a justification to stay the same? I hope that makes sense. This is why I often say that any practice, anything that you're that's trying to implement to improve your relationship with yourself or your relationship with others or your understanding of life is about checking in with your pure intention that's what it's really about it's about checking in with that pure intention is your intention to create and sustain a heightened awareness of yourself and what you're capable of or is your intention just to stay the same and to make sure that anybody doesn't agree with you that doesn't agree with you doesn't have a place in your life I always say that shadow work is not about changing yourself, it's not about like shaping yourself into a more polite shape or cutting away the excess that you don't want, but if you do shadow work then you will change and things will change. <laughs> I really hope that makes sense um, and this brings me swiftly on to my next point actually. What I just explained may seem a little fiddly and a little sticky to some people um, and other things that I explain that are related to shadow work may seem equally sticky, convoluted, complex, a little bit difficult to work out exactly how you find your way into it. That is because shadow work is complicated. Shadow work is quite a complex process and it can get quite sticky and it can be kind of like confusing or overwhelming or a little kind of like fiddly you know um shadow work is to psychology somewhat like you know organic chemistry is in the realm of science or whatever it's like oh it's worthwhile but it's a little bit bloody sticky some people have left disgruntled comments underneath my shadow work videos saying things like some of them are polite but but a little frustrated so saying things like i really was hoping for a method to follow um a step-by-step set of instructions and that's not what I found here and does that exist kind of thing other people are just like all caps locks and exclamation points like you talked for 30 minutes but you didn't actually explain how to do it you know like fuck you <laughs> if there was a step-by-step -step, easy to follow cardboard cutout set of instructions to do shadow work I probably wouldn't be as attracted to shadow work as I obviously am I'm attracted to it because it is highly individual, because it is an amazing idea based on something that I think anybody who's delved into themselves for five minutes would say is an obvious truth, that we do have a shadowy side of the psyche, a place where the stuff that the ego doesn't want gets repressed and tucked away and cornered in. And I'm attracted to it because everybody has to, has to find their own way to it. Everybody has to connect with their sense of pure intention for why they're doing it. And everybody has to find their own system for implementing it and allowing it to help them. I believe in the supreme power of individuality. And I believe that it's important that we encourage each other to be active participants in our own lives and not passive observers. In other words, I am not here to spoon feed anyone. In my shadow work playlist here on the channel, you will find videos which are packed full of techniques and methods for implementing shadow work, for doing shadow work, for going deeper in your shadow work. Do they exist in a cardboard cutout set of definable, easy to follow instructions? No, because people aren't all the same. We all have very different core personalities, we all have very different reasons for coming to shadow work and we all have very different needs. It's exactly the same way that people are taught very differently. Some people are audio learners, some people are visual learners, you know, some people are kind of hands-on, I need to actually go through it and do it to learn kind of learners. Some people are audio visual, some people are, you know, learn in other ways. Some people need to implement language to learn and some people don't so much. Shadow work is invariably going to be something for which you develop your own method, for which you develop your own thing that works. I have personally noticed that there are four distinct kinds of energy that we can bring to shadow work, that we can kind of direct towards anything that we're trying to access in our shadow. And if we give those four energies to that specific thing, then the work will be done. But how you actually foster those energies and express them is up to you as an individual. 
I'm working on an e-guide which will outline this method for you. The method is not an easy to follow cookie cutter set of instructions for everybody that will invariably work for everyone because I don't believe in that and because I don't think it's possible for shadow work nor ought it be possible for shadow work because it's such an individual thing. Um, and so it's not that, but what it will do is it will give people who want to learn in perhaps a more linear and straightforward fashion uh, something to grasp, something to go on, something so you can kind of, um, you can use it as a guideline, if you like. It's a guideline. So there is that coming, and I am very excited to share that and to kind of help people that might be feeling a little bit stuck or a little bit confuzzled to go further down the road with shadow work but I would urge you not to expect any teacher online in a book or anywhere else to spoon feed you because that kind of isn't the point and maybe if that is what you are particularly searching for then you just ain't ready to do shadow work yet and that's okay. I'll let you know when the e-zine is out. It's basically intended to provide some structure and some inspiration. Um, that's kind of the the criteria that I wanted to fulfill when I started creating this framework, if you will, and that's what I'm hoping to bring to the table. There are lots of different ways that different people do shadow work. Some people are really into having periods of their lives where they analyse and interpret and record their dreams and have a look for um, the symbols and the signs in dreams that represent things that are suppressed in the psyche that may not be coming to consciousness during waking life. Other people are really interested in things like automatic journaling and creative writing to record how they feel, um, you know, the things that they can't converse with others about, the things that they find it difficult to approach in a straightforward way, they will approach via the writing of poetry or via timed writing exercises. Some people really feel like they need to go through Freudian or Jungian psychoanalysis in order to do shadow work. There are so many different methods and in the playlist that I have on my channel, I suggest many different methods and it's really up to you to, to experiment with these methods and to give them your time and to understand that sometimes it takes a little while before you can actually find the groove in the wood and start to make this work work for you. But it's about dedication, it's about showing up for it, it's about believing in the value of shadow work and what it promises for you. Know your pure intention. Write a declaration of your commitment and write down an expression of your pure intention. Your pure intention is the why. What is the why for you with shadow work? Why do you want to do it? How do you think your life will improve when you're on that road and when you're giving yourself to shadow work consistently? What is the point of it for you? When you find that, then other stuff starts to lock into place. And I think you're less hung up on finding this perfect set of ready-made instructions for you. And you're more interested in getting in there, getting your hands dirty, playing with things, tinkering and finding what works for you. I think you become a lot less frustrated with the idea that you have to actually start to put some of these methods into practice and see if they work for you once you are focused on why you want to do that, you know. Everything looks hard and yucky and complex and too much work unless we really want to do it, you know. Like, it's like when you learn a language, you're only really going to learn a language if you really want to fucking learn that language, you know. Um, and you know that that's it that's that's where it is you've got to want it your pure intention will remind you of why you want it and show you why you want it after you have written your declaration of commitment and you've written down an expression of your pure intention for why you want to um, do shadow work then I would recommend creating a small diagram a basic diagram which outlines for you the different things that you personally want to tackle in shadow work and it can be something that you write down in categories. So for example, shadows that you want to tackle in the workplace, in your family dynamics, in your romantic relationships, in your spirituality, in your creative life, etc., etc. Or you can do a diagram which has you at the center of it and then shows your concerns for shadow work spiraling around you from the most important and prominent back out to kind of the things that maybe aren't as prominent and aren't affecting you as much but definitely need to be considered. You can do it in either of those ways or you can find your own way but I would definitely recommend having a visual representation 
of the things that you want to hit in shadow work. Uh, more things are likely to come up as you enter the shadowscape and start to traverse the shadowscape because you will start to realise that things are connected and you will start to see the roots and the stems of these problems that you have that you can identify and that you encounter in your life. So yeah, of course there's always going to be room for more on that diagram and that diagram will probably, you know, um, strengthen and lengthen over time but for now just do a basic diagram which is a little bit like a spider diagram of sorts which shows you the main things that you have noticed in your life that are problematic that you want to take a look at and you want to really get down to the bottom of that will definitely help you it will strengthen your pure intention it will strengthen your sense of commitment and it will give you a starting point and the starting point is what you need you need to be able to just look at something and say right okay today I'm definitely going to focus on what is going on with me and my husband or today I'm definitely going to focus on the fact that I consistently tell myself that I'm a bad mother or I'm a bad parent you know today I'm going to focus on that sexuality thing that I have not wanted to look at today I'm going to focus on the fact that I feel divorced from God these things that it's difficult to look at that you kind of try and shut away shadow work is just about selecting one of those things and then using the methods and the techniques that are posited by many people not just on the internet but in books as well you know if you don't like my method of teaching uh don't use it just there's tons of books about shadow work there's tons of websites about shadow work there's tons of courses there's there's videos there's you know go at it and find out what other people are saying too don't just trust me particularly if you can't get on with my style of teaching you know we're all individuals and that's fine so you take you know this thing from your list and you start to throw some techniques at it and see what sticks see what happens so remember that it is about intention um, it's about recognizing that shadow work isn't about changing yourself up nor is it, is it about expecting other people to accept that you're just going to be an arsehole sometimes. Deep down inside, on a really intuitive level, intrinsically, you know why you're coming to shadow work. If you are coming to shadow work so that you can create excuses and justifications to remain in these crappy little patterns, and so that you can use shadow work as some kind of badge of honour to prove that you are better than somebody else or to prove that you know they simply don't understand why you're being an ass hat and they should just leave you to it then you know deep down inside that you're doing that you know that you're coming from a place of resistance and you're coming from a place of obstinance if you want to use shadow work because you know that you are not a fully integrated being and you wish to be and there's something wrong and maybe you don't know what it is yet but you feel like shadow work might help you to unearth these things so that you can learn so that you can better understand so that you can flourish and thrive then you know that that is your attitude because you are filled up with this tremendous energy of positive anticipation so you know it's about finding that place inside you where you know that you're doing shadow work for the right reasons and no it's not to become a perfect human being it's not so you can chip all of the imperfections off of you that's not what it's about but nor is it about making excuses for the shitty behaviors you know nor is it about excusing and justifying the shitty behaviors the shitty ways that you might be treating people the things that you're just ignoring that are growing and growing and getting worse and worse that you don't want to face. Shadow work is about facing, it is about confronting, it's not about finding more excuses and justifications for turning away, it's about looking at the stuff, for real. So I think it is about intention and definitely watch Charlie Says Go's video if what I'm saying is resonating with you. That's all folks, I'll be back soon to talk about projection and how that relates to shadow work which is going to be exciting. I've got a video coming on forgiveness, got some videos coming on chaos i have not had the time or the weather to do videos so far that i've really felt like doing the main issue is wind um you know when the winds are strong the camera just picks it right up and i just feel really bad you know uh, subjecting you to a very very windy video because the sound quality does go right downhill so that's the main issue it's not really so much rain as it is wind for being outside and of course I've lost my holy little studio space now so that's my main place where I kind of make my videos at home um, but you know I might clear some stuff out of the way actually and just tidy up and just make the videos in there because I'm feeling kind of a bit like impatient and restless for getting back to making videos now so we'll see we'll see how it goes I might see you in a little time or I might see you in a long time but whenever I see you until next time so so much love and blessed be